My name's Peggy, and my son Connor has been diagnosed with measles. Ugh. At six o'clock each day, I wake up and my day has started. Next thing's next, I go up to Connor's room to check to see how he's doing. Today, he still has those red blotches, but it's the measles, for goodness sake. It's usually 7.30 around the time that I make my way into the bathroom, and uh, I'm gonna have to pause you here. Boy, does time go fast. Coffee's next, of course. Uh, Mommy can't run without her coffee. Breakfast usually consists of a muffin with two scoops of sugar. And uh, I gotta look over my notes. I gotta call the school. Connor's not going. It's 9.15 now. I put some Tylenol in his applesauce. I hide it in there like a dog. At least my friend Stacy says. Uh, hey, what's the matter? I like dogs. I make Connor some tea and I also get him some vitamin A rich food and some vitamin C rich food. Uh, that really does help with the measles. Now it's time to get Connor that food. Hey Connor, I got your breakfast, vitamin A, vitamin C, all the good stuff. Um, can I get you anything? I, I did call the school. You're not going to school, obviously, because we don't want it spread. Um, okay. Just keep those sunglasses on and relax, alright? I refilled your humidifier. Alright, okay. I'm going to go in and tell him I call with the doctor around 11, alright? Bye! Alright, Connor. Connor seemed to be doing just fine. Now it's time for me to go log into my Zoom. Uh, got a doctor's appointment with Dr. Stasek. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing to work. There, there you Mike. go. Mike! How's Connor doing? Uh, I mean, that's why we're talking, right? It, it sure is. How about, uh, could you give me kind of like what, what's been going on? How did it all start? Well, uh, well, it started with a runny nose. Uh, yeah, he had a fever, okay? Got it. He has a cough, and, uh, you know, com common with that was a sore throat. I don't, not sure what else. Um, I don't, I don't know what this was about, but he also had pink eye for two to three days. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of a rash. Oh yeah, yeah, and spot on, doctor. Peggy, this happened face down, and then face down his body. Yeah, it's sounding exactly like what measles usually sounds like. Yeah, I did that Google research, and I'm sorry, what? Right. Uh, have you guys been traveling recently? <laughs> we just took off a uh, trip to Scotland. Great trip. Great trip. Well, usually the measles vaccine actually takes two vaccines. You guys went to France and um, it's actually pretty, about 50% of measles cases in the U.S. are imported from travelers. So um, as you guys can see, being unvaccinated, traveling at such a young age is just the recipe uh, for coming down with the measles. Uh, because it is oh. just so contagious, and in fact, ninety percent of people exposed to it um, get measles. Let me let me let me let me let me let me how about I tell you a little bit more about the virus? That's the single-stranded RNA virus of the genus Morbo virus within the family of the par Paramyxoviridae. Some oh, it's a, it's a little bit jumpy, but I can hear you. 
and it's the host cell and it's uh it, it only occurs in humans so as you can see this is the pathogen and it's actually made of eight proteins and uh six of them are structural and then two of them are what uh spreads the virus uh if you will all right so these are the cases in the u.s since 1950 uh, our highest cases in the U.S. since 2000, which it was supposedly called eliminated, was actually peaked in 2019. Um, and that's simply because more, more and more kids are not getting vaccinated. Which doctors and experts have encouraged to bring down these numbers? Right here. In 2014, uh, that was a high year, but then following it was 2015. And this actually related to Disneyland. 2015, 111 cases from Disneyland in California. Yeah, so ever since 2000, measles has basically been eliminated in the U.S., but it has started to get higher. And uh, vaccination rates around the world are actually not as great as they are in the U.S. In 2017, thousands of cases in Europe. Uh, I don't know if you like history. I'm kind of a history kind of a guy. Measles first came out in Boston in 1650. So it, it, it's been a while since measles has been around and so many people have dealt with it, like Connor is right now. It, it's very contagious. He could have got it from just uh, touching a contaminated surface um, or maybe a kid who coughed or sneezed on him. Connor actually emailed me. I don't know if you knew this, and I'm I don't no. get emails from five year olds. Uh, but he was what asking what is the, he was asking what is the difference between chicken pox and, versus measles, and um, they are pretty similar. But um, some of the main differences are that the fever in measles is higher, um, and then these uh, red blotchy. Uh, rashes, they're flat, um, whereas chickenpox, they're more like bumps and they're fluid filled. Um, and they mainly start at the head and then go down. Um, whereas chickenpox, the dots start around the chest and then expand to the back and then eventually to the face. Um, uh, we like to say in measles, you get the three C's, which is the Porza, cough, and the conjunctivitis, as Connor has some of those. It's complex spots, um, and they are simply dots that formed inside his mouth about two to three days before um, these other symptoms became. Um, yeah, so those are some of the differences. But it is good to know that I I do know that you've also had it, so it's not gonna you're not gonna get it and. Um, it's only transmittable to his friends who might be unvaccinated for four days after the rash appears uh, yes. and four days before. So he, he's, getting, he's getting through this and I, I think it's gonna look good. Any treatments? Right. Any other treatments? What do we got? Oh, treatments. Uh, if, I, if I wasn't sure that I had it, which I am, he could get a blood test or a throat swab or a urine sample, which would confirm that it is indeed measles. If somebody has been exposed to it and they're not immune or vaccinated, if you know anyone, they can get the measles vaccination um, and it will pr protect them from the virus or you know, the symptoms will be more subtle and for a shorter length of time. Weakened immune people, pregnant and infants can receive an injection of immune serum globin, which are just antibodies Tell Connor to get well, get some rest, get the vitamin A. Tylenol is always good, and that can help reduce the fever. All right, Peggy, uh, have a great day. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. All done with that. Time to go check in on Connor. Uh, all right, Connor. Got off the phone with the doctor. Um, he said it's probably because we went to Scotland. Um, you probably got it there, and I, I never gave you that vaccine when you were younger. 
Halloween! Uh, probably not the middle of the yeah, only because if any other unvaccinated kids are in the neighborhood, they could easily get it from you. We'll get you some candy, alright? Only a couple more days, alright? Okay! Alright. I'm gonna have to go talk to your yeah, office. Yeah, let's not get into that. Snoozing away. Uh, it's around 7.30 now, and I gotta refill that humidifier. It's also about time for bed. All right, Connor, uh, it's getting kind of late. I know it's still pretty bright out, but um, it's almost your bedtime, all right? All right, get some rest. Well, that's all, folks, for a parent dealing with a kid with a highly contagious disease that was once common in the U.S. and an expected life event, but now is rare due to the measles vaccine. The red blotchy skin and fever was spread through cough droplets, and, uh... With all honesty, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of this measles business. 